everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really sweet curved top gift bag. Um, like all my gift bags, it also folds flat, so you can see there on the side. This one measures uh, seven and a half by four, so it's a really, really good size. I'm going to go through and show you how to make this little tag here, which I've heat embossed, which is really, really sweet. And then it just opens up, take all of that off. And you can see inside there, you've got a really spacious gift bag. So, I mean, the height of this piece here on the side is um, five inches. So it would fit um, a nice candle, small clothing, you know, little t-shirts, baby clothes, um, things like that would go in there quite easily as well. Lots and lots of things. It's just another style and another size gift bag to show you. So I'm going to pop all that to one side. The papers that I'm using are the V&A um, collection by Trimcraft. Um, I absolutely adore these prints, they're really lovely. So I'm going to be using today, bring this one in. Okay. So this is the other print, or one of the other prints from the pack. So again, I'm sticking with the blue and the red ones um, just because I was using scrap. Um, of those colours for the gift tag. So I've got some left over, so I wanted to make another one. Got some ribbon here as well, which I've got, which is approximately 20 inches. Okay, so nice matching ribbon. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is all the normal scoring if you want it to be a solid gift bag and not fold flat. And then I'll do the scoring to fold it flat after, so it's separate just a bit easier to follow that way. So this is using two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock um, or paper. This paper, the trim craft uh, for the V&A, I think it's 160 GSM or maybe 200. I'll check and share the links or if I remember and look, I'll put a little pop up here just to clarify that. But any strong paper and cardstock would be perfect. So what you wanna do is first of all, along your 12 inch side is score at half an inch. Okay, and then you want to score at eight inches. Then rotate, and you want to score at four inches. Okay, repeat that on the second piece, and that's all you need to do if you want it to not fold flat. You just want a solid gift bag. Now, if you want it to fold flat, what you now need to do is flip this over, okay, and score, this is for the front, score at six inches, just down to that first score line here. Okay, so that's the four inch, I'm um, sorry, the, that's the eight inch score line that you scored when it was that way. Okay, so it's this score line here. So you scored at half an inch and at eight inches. Then we rotated it and scored at four. Then we're gonna flip it. So that's that four inch base and you're just scoring at six just to that first score line. Then flip it and rotate it so you've got the half inch tab on your left hand side and you want to score at 10 inches down to that score line that you just made at 6 inches. Okay. So if I flip it over so your tab will be on your, now that half inch tab will be on your right hand side, you can see the score lines. Ignore that pencil mark for the minute but you can see here that's your 8 inch score line, that's your 4 inch base score line that's your 10 inch one down to that little six inch one that you've done, okay? Then grab your other piece and this will be the back, again, if you're having it fold flat. And again, you wanna score at half an inch, at eight inches, rotate it, score at four inches, and then score at six, but this time score all the way down because it's the back. Then rotate it so the half inch tab again is on the left hand side and score at 10 inches down to that six inch score line that you just scored all the way through. Again, I'll flip it over and you can see the difference now that you will have two of these running across your page, whereas on the front, you've only got it going to there. Again, ignore that pencil. I'm gonna talk through that in a minute, okay? So keep your stylus, oh, just get rid of my scoreboard. So first of all, starting with the, um, the back piece, what you want to do, again, a lot of you now will know exactly what to do if you've been following these a lot, but from where we've scored that 
um, 10 inch score line here down to this 6 inch score line. We're then going to score within this like rectangle piece here, this is our side, we're just going to score within that smaller rectangle. I'm going to bring this up and show you a bit closer. You can see there that I'm just scoring from the bottom of that score line like so, there you go, you can see, okay? So you're just scoring like a triangle within that. So if this is the back piece, there's that strip here, it's within that and within that rectangle there. Okay, and this is basically, if I burnish this now, again, just to make it a bit more easier to understand, that is gonna be, once we cut up here, that's our side. So that's why you want that score line, which is the 10 inch one running through the middle, and then that little triangle is all going to help it all fold flat. And this is the back, so this score line here will help also fold that all down. Okay, so again, with the front, you just want to do exactly the same. So from the bottom of that 10 inch score line, and just create a triangle within that smaller rectangle. So it's exactly the same as the back piece, okay? But we don't have this continual line here because we just don't want it to um, ruin the front of the gift bag. So this time you're just working within this, well, you're working within the same on each piece, but that's the difference that you will have between the back and the front is that you just won't have that line there. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna burnish this one here. And then we just need to do a couple of pencil marks. So. What you need is because we are cutting down now, because we're going to create this, um, this curve top. So what you want to do is on the side where you have the side of your gift bag, so where we've just done all of this scoring, this is our base, this larger piece. From that score line there, you want to come up five and a quarter inches. Okay, so there's five and a quarter on my ruler. Make sure it's right, perfectly lined up with that score line, okay? And then with a pencil, just do a pencil mark, a little dot, just at the top there, okay? Then go up to this score line, and again, following this same one here, five and a quarter. And again, put a marker there. Now with those two markers, you just wanna join that up, and you're gonna cut along this line, so it needs to be perfectly straight. And then again, go across to this tab piece now, and you want to do exactly the same, five and a quarter, a little marker, and on the very end there, and then just do a little pencil mark. Then what you want to do with your second piece is line it, um, lay it on top exactly in the same orientation. Okay, so we've got our base here and these score lines, you can see there, are all matched up. And just make sure your paper or your card is completely matched up with the piece underneath and with that tab piece you can just follow that pencil mark and again draw another pencil line and then with the bottom here because when we put this together we need to make sure that those pieces are going to join and if you do your measurement on this one separate and then do it on this one separate you may be slightly out by a millimeter or something and that will you will see that when you come to join your bag together whereas if you lay it over the top I've got the top and the bottom here completely perfectly um, sat on top of each other. I can then put a little pencil mark there and then I'll have to use my ruler for this bit here because obviously it's inside but five and a quarter and then again just do a pencil mark across. Okay so now that we've done that we need to do the curve effect. So I've got my back piece here. Now I've just picked up, just I've got a plate. So you want something that is going to be wider then seven and a half um, inches, because this is seven and a half between this um, tab here and this piece here. This is our front of our bag. And basically, you wanna bring the plate or whatever it is you're using just, just up to the top, but you want room to be able to do a pencil mark, so don't go right to the top, okay? And you wanna make sure that the plate is joining with the five and a half, which mine is, which is why I've done, um, sorry, five and a quarter this distance that we done with the ruler just now. It just comes up to that point, so that's why I decided on five and a quarter. And then you just wanna grab your pencil, making sure that those points join perfectly, 
and just go from point to point creating that arch. Okay, so again, grab this piece here, pop my plate down. Again, don't want to go right to the top because I need to be able to do my pencil mark. And then join them up. Okay, so that is our arch done. Now you've got to do your best cutting you can do because this is all done now. Um, by cutting it ourselves and not using the trimmer or anything like that. So, starting along this piece here, you want to very neatly cut all the way along that pencil mark. Like so. Okay, and then I just find it easier to start from the top of the curve. And try and do it in as little cuts as possible so as I'm going around, a bit like fussy cutting, I'm moving it with my left hand and then you should get a nice neat cut. Okay, And then from this side you just want to do that little cut on the top of that tab. We'll take a little notch off of that in a minute as well just so you don't see that when we put it together and then very neatly you want to come up and again as little cuts as possible work your way around. So should nicely snip off there we go all right so if you've got any um uh, pencil mark just grab your ruler and um, your ruler your rubber and just go over the ends there the edges and just make sure that you've removed all of that okay so that is now what you want to have so i'm going to repeat that and do that on this piece okay so that is now both of those pieces already so I'm just going to burnish I forgot to do my little tabs here on the side now before you go and stick it together just make sure that when we stick this tab over this that it matches up so actually just take off I said we take off the little just take a little wedge off the bottom and the top okay so you can see that I've just taken a little notch out of both of the tops there um, but I'm sorry, it's just so that it doesn't stick out. Okay, what you want to do is just line this top of this up with the very bottom of that curve and make sure the top and the bottom, if I bring mine up there, you can see that it lines up. So I'd say the most important bit is making sure the bottom is lined up. Then if you're slightly off at the top, you've still got time now to be able to rectify it and, and make it nice and straight. And um, if, you know, the arch is finishing maybe higher up you can just cut down the arch a little bit further um, or if this is um, sticking up more you can trim this so just check both of your sides before you stick it together and it will just mean then that you don't have any um, moments where you then end up throwing it across the floor <laughs> we don't want that to happen Okay, so now I'm going to grab some of my wet glue. Um, you can use, it's entirely up to you, wet glue or um, double-sided tape. Wet glue, you just got a bit of wiggle room so you can, you know, move it around. So I'm just going to go along the sides here. don't need too much. I'm using Tombow, so it's pretty strong. So I need to do it on this side. So I'm just going to bring it down. Actually, I'm going to flip it over and lay it down that way. So you just want to make sure you meet it up to the score line and then make sure your bottom is all nicely lined up. Like so. Okay. And then flip it over and then you want to put some um, uh, what do you call it? glue <laughs> mind. honestly I were I scare I scare myself sometimes because I just find myself staring at something and I'm really struggling to remember what it is or what it's called how bad is that I think it's because I'm concentrating so much on doing this that I I don't know it's does anybody else do that please make me feel that I'm not the only one because it does worry me sometimes. 
Okay, so now this one should just lay completely flat, which it is, and it's just fitting in there perfectly. Okay, now what I have realised I've not done is cut up the base, but it doesn't matter because it, you can do it this way. And I know actually my um, my mum sometimes prefers sticking the whole thing together and then cutting up because, again, it kind of eliminates, you know... Um, if you've cut it, it, how am I trying to explain it? If you'd already cut the base and maybe gone too high or not, you know, high enough, um, you can still change it if you do it this way. Um, whereas if you've cut it and it's you've done it before, um, and you get to this point and it's not lining up and stuff like that, then there's not much you can do about it. So now you can see you've just got this big piece like this so now what we need to do is cut up every one of our corners up to that first score line which is our base so I'm just going to cut up like so okay so you're just cutting up to that first score line there and then go around to the next one like so so you see what I mean? I know now that that's all perfectly, all my base is all lined up nicely. Um, so, you know, many different ways of putting together a, um, a gift bag or a box. And again, that one, and then the last one. Like so. So now we've got, this will be the base, so the piece with the line going through the back is the back so you would put that one down first then your sides and then the front one and basically that means that we've got a nice plain base inside the box rather than looking at those two side panels and then what we want to do is just go around and just take a wedge out of the smaller side pieces not your big front pieces just these so I'm just taking a nice big wedge off of each one and this just stops any overhang again it's all these little bits like I always say in all of my tutorials that just make the the finished product look you know really neat and then that side there like so okay so you can see the wedge that I've taken out from each of those okay so now what you can do is on the side pieces because we want to I'm going to hole punch now here before we put the base together so what we want to do is we want to fold it flat so just pretend that you've put it all together okay like so and then bring in the sides and they should naturally want to fold with those score lines and then with the with your fingers on the back just come down to where that back score line is here so this is that other one we done and it will just all start just kind of help it in the corners and stuff the initial fold is always the the harder one i say because but once it's now got those creases it will always know to fall back into place okay because now what we want to do is make sure now this is when you should you know both the curves should meet up perfectly which mine do okay so that's what you want and then we are going to hole punch, so where's my trusty punch? This is my screw punch, I rave about all the time, you have to buy one. Um, I've had quite a few people message me now saying, oh my god, I love it, I've just bought mine, so yeah, highly recommend it. Um, you need to come down, let me grab my other bags, I can't remember, I think it was a, a one and a half, yeah. So find your centre point, so seven and a half so we said it was three and three quarters so there's the middle i'm just going to put my finger there and then come so go across three and three quarters just putting my thumb there bring the ruler down and come up to the top here okay so it's eight inches which is right then come down one and a half and with a pencil so one and a half I'm just going to put a light cross there because I'll rub this out in a minute. And then from that, I've done another one and a half each side. So just make sure you've got a nice straight line. 
and you want to do one and a half so I'll do another cross there and one and a half so I've got another cross there okay did I do three looks like that one's shorter I oh, know that's two and a quarter I'm wondering whether that's going to be too wide okay in that case then I'm going to do one I'm going to change it so if you want to do one and a half you can it's just I want mine to match for what I'm using these for I want them to both match so I'm going to come out from that center cross that I just done one and a quarter um, and one and a quarter okay then over ooh, over the cross that one and a quarter cross that I've just done grab your punch and just punch down and then the other one like so and then I can just rub out those pencil marks okay and now we can put the base together so I mean I guess you can do it with the base stuck down but I prefer doing it that way um, just because I've still got some wiggle room if I need to so now on this side here on one of the tabs you just want to pop some glue that's one side and then on the other one like so and just bring that one over and then the base again if you want to use double sided tape you can do okay and then just bring that whole piece over and you shouldn't have anything sticking out you can see nothing sticking out um, this side well, I've got nothing sticking out here and then with your ruler as always just go in there and just spread out that glue and just make sure that it's nice and stuck and it's a really strong, I mean, Tombow dries quite hard. Um, you've got three, yeah, three layers of card on your base. So, and you could also reinforce that base with, <clears throat> excuse me, even stronger. So you could layer up two pieces of 300 GSM cardstock on the bottom. And then this would work perfectly to hold a heavy candle um, or anything of, of that's got more of a weight to it. So... Um, yeah, so that's other ways to reinforce gift bags. Because if you think about it, the gift bags you buy pre-made in the shops, they always have a separate card base. Um, so you can, well, not all of them actually, the cheapy ones don't, but any good quality one, they tend to have a separate piece of card on the bottom. So, okay, so that's all done. And then we just need to add our ribbon. So that's the front. Oh, and the gift tag, actually, that's what I need to do first. Okay, so I've got my pieces here for my gift tag. So I've just cut um, using a similar red and blue. And then I've taken a piece of the scrap, which was from when I cut this piece off. And I've just made um, a nice bit there to go in between, just to kind of tie it all together. So with this piece here, I'm just gonna do a quick little bit of um, heat embossing, just to show you, um, you know, ways to get nice effects with your stamps. So I'm just going to, cover that with my anti-static powder and then you need your stamps so I've got two here so I've got a happy birthday again keeping it with the same I've got a butterfly attached there okay and just make that nice and centered and the good thing with this is when you're using um, a darker cardstock you can see your um, watermark um, inks so I can see perfectly there. Next I'm going to add some flourishes so I've just got this little stamp here and I'm just going to go around all of the edges so I'm going to come over the edge there again I can perfectly see how this looks and I just thought these matched the kind of flourishes in the papers that I'm using just work my way around and then the last bit there and you can see how that lovely that looks and I'm just going to grab some scrap paper and I've got my silver um, embossing powder this is the paper mania and I'm just going to cover that over Find an area where it's not covered, pick that up. Okay, if I just bring that up, you can see now where that's all nicely covered. Then I'm just gonna pop that to one side, get rid of all of this. Okay, and then with my heat gun, I'm just gonna hold my tweezers in place there just so I don't burn myself. Get the heat gun nice and hot first. Just give that a couple of seconds 
just to cool down. Okay, and then while it's still a little bit warm, you can kind of reshape it. But I'm going to be putting some foam onto the back of this. Okay, so now if I just bring that up, look at that gorgeous tag. That lovely. So I'm going to stick the bottom piece um, again, grab my glue. And then with this piece here, I'm just going to pop a few of my foam squares. And then again, just line this all up so it's all nicely even and in the centre, like so. Okay, so if I just bring that up now, look at that gorgeous tag, absolutely love that. And then again, with my screw punch, I'm just going to punch at the top of that middle one. Oh, it does twist, there we go, so that's that all done. Now I'm going to prepare my ribbon, so I'm just going to, actually no, I'll cut it, yeah, I'll cut it on an angle just to feed it through and then I'll tidy it up in a minute. Okay, so the back will have the score line, so start from the back, thread through the ribbon, that side and that side, make sure you've got kind of even ribbon on each side and then go through the front, like so. Again, make sure all the arches and the, the curved bits should all match up. And then with my tag, that's going to go on one side. So this ribbon frays terribly, which is why I need why, why I need to seal it, like so. And then tie it in a nice bow. Okay, so there you go. I've just sealed off the edges of that bow. And you can see, I just think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Now one thing I'm going to add, which I've just decided to do, is I'm going to add some handles because I've got this scrap. And when I pop it in, I think it looks so cute. If I just bring that in there, oh, how sweet is that? Absolutely love it. So I have just cut two strips of half an inch by whatever length card it is. So as always, I say 12 inches, A4 length, or the 11 inches if you're using the letter paper. And I've just got two of them and I've just curved them slightly. So this again is completely optional. You know, it's so easy to add this on um, at the end if that's what you want to do. So I am going to, in fact I don't even need to undo the bag, so I'm going to grab my, where did I just put my glue? Oh there it is. Grab my glue and I'm going to put a little bit on the end there, about half an inch, and I'm going to come off by about one inch from the edge of the bow there where we've done that whole punch. So I'm going to come across about one inch and just sit that inside like so. Keeping it nice and straight, just following the grid line there on my mat. So just stick that one down. And then bring this piece round. So put your thumb over the top of the edge so it's completely the same way up. So it's all nice and straight. And then bring it round, keeping your thumb facing the same way. Put another little bit of glue on the bottom. And again, coming across about, um, what did I say it was, a inch. Yeah, it's about right. And again, I'm just going to line it up. It's nice and straight with the grid behind. Just get that nice and stuck down. And then what I can do is flip it over with the other piece here. This is just easy now because you just lie, lie, you will lie it down. So it's exactly the same as the handle that you've just done. So just sit that one on top like so. Okay, and again, make it straight, put your thumb there, bring it around, and it will sit nicely under the other handle when you do it like that. And again, pop that one. So it's lined up with the one underneath. So everything's all perfectly aligned with each other. Actually, no, we'll just flip that one around. There we go. And it will sit nicely under that one, like so. Okay, and there you have it. How sweet is that? <laughs> I think that's adorable. It's got such a cool look about it. So there you have it. So there's one with a handle, and then there's the one that I've done without. So I think they both look lovely. That's got like a little purse kind of clutch look about it now when I put it next to that one with the bag. So yeah, so there you have it. So you can choose. I think I'm going to add handles to that one actually now as well. Um, again, if you've got something heavy like a candle, I think it's going to make it much, much easier to hold like that. But I think they're stunning. And I just love that they all fold flat, even better. So there you go. Um, as always, um, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.